Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. The relational model of data storage allows you to more easily and effectively model a complex entity or subject like sales. The relational model of data storage eliminates redundant data entry and also creates less data to store, making the relational database model smaller and faster than the flat file. When you create a relational database, you will first need to perform some data modeling. Data modeling allows you to ensure that you are recording all of the information needed and also helps you identify the entities involved and the relationships to each other. When you create a relational database, you need to identify the unique entities involved in the process that you're modeling. These entities will often become the various tables in your database. So, for example, if we're using the sales database example from the last lesson, the customer is identified as an entity. Within each table created for each entity, you must only list fields or columns of information which share a one-to-one -one relationship with the entity or the subject of the table. So, for example, in a customer table, you would want to place the first name field into the customer table assuming that each customer only is going to have a single first name to record. You would not want to place an item into the customer table as the relationship between the customer and the items that the customer purchases is one to many. So what would one do with the column of item? Well in the relational model each field or column of information is an attribute of an entity. So what entity is item an attribute for? In other words, with what entity does the item, which is a description of the item purchased, share a one-to-one -one relationship? Perhaps you may initially think that the item is an attribute of the sale. However, could you have a single sale with multiple items ordered? Probably so. In that case, it must be an attribute of something else. In this case, item is probably going to be an attribute of an item entity, meaning that you'll probably need to create an item table. Many times when initially approaching data modeling, it may be easier to list the various attributes that you wish to record and then try to find what entities those attributes describe. The entities will become the various tables in your database. The attributes will become columns within the tables. Remember that each column in your table must share a one-to-one -one relationship with the subject of that table. So in either case, you should probably keep your information written down on paper until you have a rough idea of what information it is that you want to record about the various entities involved in the process or system that you're trying to model. It's a rare feat to have your preliminary sketch of the relational database tables turn out to be the finished model that you'll actually wind up creating and access. Many times, you'll need to create a model, look for problems with the model that you've created, and then edit the design until you're ready to attempt creating the tables. So let's take a look at the preliminary model of the sales database from the last lesson. First, you would make a listing of the various pieces of information that you want to record. These become the attributes of the various entities. Next, you would try and find what entities these describe and list those too. So we can see first name we think might go to customers, last name, customer, company, customer, address, customer and so on and so forth. Next, make some sketches of the tables that show the fields of information within them. This can help you start to visualize what tables you will need to create and will also allow you to see how the tables will eventually be related to each other in a larger relational database structure. So once you have a rough idea of what you would like to record and what tables you will need in order to record the information, you must then ensure that each table has what is called a primary key. A primary key is a column or a combination of columns that will produce a unique value for each row within a table. Many times, an additional column is added to the tables in order to provide this unique identification. You can assign each record a unique number through an ID column. For example, that is what your social security number is used for by the government. 
you may also have a unique driver's license number as well. If you were recording any of those pieces of information in your tables, you could use those as the primary key. If, however, you aren't recording any type of unique information for each row, then often you have to assign your own unique values. Many companies, for example, will assign a customer ID number in order to uniquely identify each customer. So let's examine how your data model could change once you assign primary keys to your table. For example, you need a way to uniquely identify each customer. In the current data model, there isn't any kind of information that would enable you to uniquely identify each record or row within the customer's table. So you could add an additional field, or a column, of information to this table, customer ID. Assume that you then add another column for sales ID to the sales table, and an item ID field to the items table. So now our sketch would show each primary key field in bold or some other notation within your table diagram. Now the primary key is a very important concept in a relational database because it is through the primary key assignment that you create the necessary relationships between your data tables. For example, Examine the relationship between the customer's table and the sales table in terms of the one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationship. In this case, for each or one customer, there can potentially be many sales. So the tables will share a one-to-many relationship. and This is the most common type of relationship between tables with extremely few exceptions. What you need to do next is to find a way to join the many side of this relationship back to the one side of the relationship. So you need to cre relate each entry in the sales table to the customer in the customer's table. Now in order to join tables they must have a shared or common field between them. This would be a field that contains the same kind of data in both tables. So in this example you're trying to assign each sale to a customer. To do this, you would want to add a field to the sales table that corresponds to a matching field from the customer's table. And which field would you choose? The answer is the primary key field. Remember that each primary key field is designed to uniquely identify each record in the table. So you could add a field to the sales table that would make a reference to the values stored in the customer ID field of the customer's table. That way, when you enter a record into the sales table in the, in the future, you will only need to enter the customer ID number of the customer to whom the sale was made, practically eliminating redundant data entry. So you can see one advantage of the relationship, or the relational model. In this model, you only have to enter the customer's data once in the customer's table, and then assign them a unique customer ID. When you then enter sales for that customer into the sales table, you will only need to make a reference to the appropriate customer ID in the sales record to indicate who made the purchase. This allows you to store much less redundant data, making the tables smaller and faster to use than the flat file table. It's also important to note that the customer ID field, which is added to the sales table, is not a primary key within the sales table. That table already has a primary key field, which is the sale ID field, and that's going to uniquely identify each sale, much like a receipt or an invoice number would. Technically, the field in the many table, which makes a reference back to the primary key in the one table, is called a foreign key. Its only purpose is to relate the two tables, and the values within a foreign key are almost always non-unique within the column. Now don't worry about the mechanics of the data entry or how to create primary keys and table joints just yet. It'll be explained in later lessons. For now, just try to comprehend the concepts and reasoning behind the relational database design. Let's examine how the table diagram could change to reflect the newly created relationship between customers and sales. Next, you would want to examine the other relationships between the tables. For example, what is the relationship between customers and items? Don't be hasty. Not every table in the database has to be directly related to every other table. The only way that customers and items are related is that the customer purchases the items when making a sale. The customers table and the items table do not have a direct connection. 
However, in a relational database, as long as every table is connected in an appropriate manner to the correct tables, you can find out how they are related to each other through the tables by which they are connected. In summary, the customers are connected to the items, but only through sales. So, how are the sales table and the items table connected? Well, for each sale, there may be many items ordered. Also, each item may appear in more than one sale. In relational database design, you cannot, or should not, create a many-to-many -many relationship. That would make no sense from a strictly logical point of view. You need to be able to tell which items were ordered in which sale, while reducing the amount of data entry. Also, you may notice another problem with the current data model. The amount field is attached to the sales table. In this context, this field would be the sales total. If that is the case, then how can you record the price of each item at the time of sale? What if the price of each item changes in the future? Isn't amount also an attribute of the item? So what you're starting to see is that you need to be able to link the unique sales records to the unique items ordered on each sale. So you need a sales details table in order to do this. But what fields do you place into the new sales details table? And the answer is anything that is an aspect of the many side of the sales transaction. For example, the sale date field can stay in the sales table because each sale only happens on a specific date. The quantity of the items purchased at the time of sale is actually part of the many aspect of the sale and should be moved to the new sales details table along with the amount field. The customer ID will stay tied to the sales table as each purchase is made by a single customer. So let's examine how this new sales details table will affect our data model. Now you need to remember that the new sales details table will also need to contain a primary key field. Before assigning the primary key field, look at how you will relate the sales table to the sales details table. The tables are related in that each sale may have one or more items purchased in each sale. So you need to join each record in the sales details table to the sale record to which it corresponds. To do this, you will add a foreign key into the sales details table that corresponds to the data in the primary key in the sales table. So you will add the sales ID field to the sales details table. Next, examine the relationship between the items table and the sales details table. In this case, for each item ordered in a transaction shown in the sales details table, it must make a reference to a unique item in the items table. So you will add the foreign key field of item ID to the sales details table. Then you can join the tables through their shared or common fields. So let's examine how the data table diagrams in the data model may look after performing these two tasks. So now you've created all of the necessary relationships between the tables. However, the sales details table is still missing a primary key field. Now you could add another field as the primary key, such as sales detail ID. However, you could also see if there's a combination of fields that already exists that, when combined, produce a unique row value. In fact, there is the combination of sales ID plus item ID. There should never be a repeating combined value in those two columns. If there were, it would mean that the same item was being recorded in the same order twice. And if that were the case, it should only be recorded once in the sales details table with a 2 in the quantity field, for example. So assuming that you make the combination of fields the primary key for the table, let's examine the data diagram again. So this is the final data diagram based on the information that was needed to record sales. Obviously, there is more information that could be recorded, but this example is only supposed to illustrate some of the decision-making that should go into your table design before you actually begin to create your tables in Access.